All right, we got everybody. What we're gonna do now is show you a technique to improve hip extension mobility. In our previous post, I, I spoke a little bit about how important understanding biomechanics are throughout the entire body. And when we talk about the hip itself, a lot of false impressions about glides and things like that, especially with hip extension. Because we're talking about the hip joint, which is a ball and socket joint or a pure ovoid joint, you have gliding motion with ab and adduction and with internal and external rotation. But because of the axis of movement with flexion and extension, that movement is a pure spin. So there really is no gliding. When we want to improve that mobility, we'll utilize that knowledge for our mobilization. So in a lot of circles, you'll see a lot of people just do stretching, maybe not in a full prone position, maybe in a half prone position. But you can do stretching and other things, and they'll do hold, relax, contract, relax, things like that to improve that range of motion. But really, you're working and you're improving myofascial excursion more than just mobility at the hip. So what we're going to do is demonstrate the actual mobilization of the hip. So on our, our partner here, on our patient, I can block the innominate movement and the sacrum and assess his passive hip range of motion. And you can see his left side is really pretty stiff. That's about all he's got. So I'm going to position him toward his limit. If you can lift your leg for me and use some pillows just to bring him toward his limit. And then I can use a belt around his upper thigh, getting it close to the axis of movement at his hip. You can lift again. Thank you. And then getting it up toward his hip joint, I'm going to tighten down this belt and be in this position. That way, all I have to do for the mobilization is really just to sit back. I don't have to do much else. I don't have to do a whole lot of work. And here, I can stabilize this pelvis so it doesn't rock around. And I have his leg, so it doesn't roll around either. So I just sit back in this position. And then I could sit here and just wait for things to stretch, but I don't like to wait, I'm impatient. So I'm gonna have him gently push his leg out toward me, which will work his abductors and relax. As he relaxes, I can sit back more and take up slack. So you're really working on improving myofascial mobility or tone or tightness, things like that, that's limiting that pure spin movement. Go again. And that's what we're going to do for mobilization. Let go. As I feel a greater ability for his hip to distract in this position, I'll, I'll take up all the slack I can until I feel no further improvements with my mobilization, with my hold relax. And then I put another pillow under his leg. So lift your leg again. So notice we're not firing his hip flexors. We're not firing his hip extensors. We're only having him fire his abductors to improve the mobility of hip extension. Because again, hip extension is a pure spin movement. Best way to do that is to distract the joint. If I'm going to distract it here, the muscles that are going to be limiting that would be some would be his hip abductors. So I sit back, have him push out again, hold a few seconds, then let go. As he lets go, I sit back, take up more slack. Go again. He goes and relax. Now, so that would be the mobilization. We can see if we made any gains, look at like for me, as compared to before. So you can come around here, back to the same vantage point that we started at, just so there's no camera trickery. And I stabilize his pelvis. You can see how much hip range of motion that we gained. So it's at least probably twice as much. Important after this is obviously going to be re-education. So he's going to have to do some work holding into the end range really working his glutes because his hip hasn't been in this range of motion for quite a while. His butt and other hip extensors are not used to using this range of motion. So we're going to do prolonged holds. We're going to do a combination of isotonics working in and out of that new range to get him used to that. Okay.
relax there. So just keep in mind, when you're working with this, all of our, not all, but most of our patients have limitations with hip extension. It's not just the myofascial mobility of the hip flexors. A lot of times it is actually the hip, a stiff hip. So hip being a pure ovoid joint spins with hip flexion and extension. So in order to improve that spin motion, you preposition them at their limitation, at their end range, and then you distract the joint. And you can use hold relax or contract relax to help decrease that muscle tension that's limiting the spin movement and the distraction. Right. Thanks, guys.